The leader of the Christian world of the time, the Pope, cautioned his armies with the following. Do not fight against Barbarossa, for he will never leave the place he arrives at without conquering it. Istanbul had already been conquered. Mehmed the Conqueror had closed an era and opened a new one. The Ottoman Empire had demonstrated its power on land and set its sights on the seas. The goal? The Mediterranean. And there's only one man who can achieve it. Someone even more famous than Suleiman the Magnificent. A pirate who knows five languages. You heard that right. A Turkish pirate. Hazir Reis, also known as the Captain of the Seas, the Conqueror of the Seas, Hariddin Barbarossa. It might surprise you that I said he was a pirate. We'll talk about that in a minute. First, let's take a look at his family. Because this is where his story begins. His older brother, Master Uruch, had learned seafaring and maritime commerce during his early years. With his courage, intelligence, and entrepreneurship skills, he had come to own a ship. During this period, Spain, was putting a lot of pressure on Muslims. The Barbarossa brothers soon started to engage in battles against the Spanish. After a short period of time, they took Algeria. Oruj Reis wasn't just a seafarer anymore, but also the ruler of Algeria. However, this only lasted a year. Because after a year, Spain, together with the original inhabitants of Algeria, launched an attack. Hezir Reis's brothers, Ishaq and Oruj Reis, fell during the battle. The story had come to an end for Ishaq and Oruj Reis. But some ends are the beginnings of new stories. Having taken heavy losses, Hezir Reis had a plan. Despite the intense battle, they managed to keep Algeria and now he was the ruler. To demonstrate his allegiance to Yavuz Sultan Selim, he coined currency and held sermons after Friday prayer in his name. Sultan Selim gave Barbarossa governorship of Algeria and placed him under the protection of the empire. Because of his service to the Ottoman Empire, he earned the name Hayreddin, meaning favorable of the religion. So how did his race come to be called Barbarossa? The name Barbarossa actually belonged to his older brother, Oruch Bey. Because of his red beard, he was named Barba Rosa, meaning red beard in Italian. However, after his brother's death, the name passed to his race, and thus he became known as Barbarossa Hayreddin. Was Barbarossa Hayreddin really a pirate? Did his race used to be a bad person? No. Contrary to popular belief, Turkish Muslim pirates were not like the pillaging and looting sea bandits that we know of. They were the sea raiders that are the equivalent of the land raiders. They used to track the enemy ships at sea, hit the shores of the Christian nations that were attacking the Muslims, and neutralize their fleets. Barbarossa Hayreddin was a brave and knowledgeable commander. Because he spent his life at sea, he spoke many Mediterranean languages such as Greek, Arabic, Spanish, Italian, and French very well. He blew through the Mediterranean like a storm, conquering new lands and collecting treasures. Meanwhile, the Ottoman Empire had demonstrated its power on land to everyone by conquering huge lands. And its next goal was to reach the Mediterranean. The Ottomans wanted to continue its conquests also at the sea against Europe's largest and strongest nation, Spain. Barbarossa was invited to Istanbul by Suleiman the Magnificent, Selim the Conqueror's successor. Because Barbarossa knew the seas extensively and had fought against the Spanish for many years and knew them very well, the news of the Barbarossas entering under the protection of the Ottomans worried Europe, especially the King of Spain. 
Due to his constant struggle against the Christians, Barbarossa knew the Mediterranean like the back of his hand. The Pope addressed the armies. Do not fight against Barbarossa, for he will never leave the place he arrives at without conquering it. You must understand this. If a place has been decided to be taken by him, those who fight against him will not go to heaven. This is why the tide turned when Sultan Suleiman joined the forces with Barbarossa. During that era, Barbarossa was more famous than Suleiman the Magnificent. When Barbarossa arrived in Istanbul and presented himself to the Sultan, he was appointed as the Fleet Admiral of the Ottoman Empire, the Captain of the Seas. And so, he was given the honor of being the first Ottoman captain. When Barbarossa was appointed as admiral, there was another legend alive during this same era. Piri Reis, the governor of the seas and the man who drew the first world map. That's right, Piri Reis was also alive during that time and joined many successful naval expeditions with the Barbarossa brothers. The book he left behind, the book of Behiria, has been an important work of art that were left to the world naval history and used by almost every captain of that time. Barbarossa later set sail into the Mediterranean with the Ottoman fleet. He battered the Italian coasts and then took the Venetian islands in the Aegean Sea. Everywhere he went, he cut his enemies down like grass. It was decided that the Ottoman advance had to be stopped. An alliance was made between Spain, the Papacy and Austria. After the addition of Venice, Portugal, Malta and Genova to this alliance, a large Christian fleet was formed, commanded by Andrea Doria. It was called the Holy League Fleet. And so the Crusader fleet that would stop Barbarossa was established. The largest maritime battle in Turkish history, which would change the global balance of power and be recorded in world history was about to begin. All preparations were made for the naval battle of Preveza. The Crusader fleet had started gathering in Corfu and then surrounded the fort of Preveza located at the north entrance of the Ambracian Gulf. Upon receiving the news, Barbarossa sent a vanguard fleet of 20 ships commanded by Turgut Reis. Turgut Reis encountered 40 ships from the enemy fleet in the waters of Zenta and sent word to Barbarossa. The next day, According to some sources, there were around 600 ships with 60,000 men on board waiting off the coast of Preveza. Barbarossa, on the other hand, had 122 ships and 2,000 men. He had to come up with an extraordinary plan despite the crushing odds. The Ottoman fleet was one-third of the enemy fleet, but for the believers, 60,000 was just a number. Because they believed in the verse. How many times has a small force vanquished a mighty army by the will of Allah? And Allah is with those who are steadfast. Al-Baqarah 249 Didn't our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, win many battles despite having smaller numbers? Knowing this very well and following the footsteps of our Prophet, peace be upon him. Barbarossa was acting cautiously and patiently, and now he had to make a difficult decision, defend or counterattack. He prayed until the morning light, O oh Allah, make Islam powerful against the disbelievers. Grant Islam a mighty aid. He soon fell asleep and had a dream. Barbarossa recalls the dream like this, there were small fish in the sea. Some of the fish had split bellies. 
And then I was handed a piece of paper. Then I unfolded it and started to read. On a piece of white paper with green lettering, Nasrum min Allahi wa fathun kareeb wa bashar al mu'minin was written. Upon reading it, I rubbed the paper into my face and eyes and woke up reciting, Praise be to you, Allah. Barbarossa had understood the message in his dream. The words on the paper were a verse. In the verse, the Almighty commanded, The help of God and a close victory. Give glad tidings to the believers. Due to the interpretation of his dream that he thanked Allah for, he immediately decided to leave the Gulf. He planned to unpredictably sail across the Gulf and attack off Lepanto. He took advantage of the heedlessness of the world and met the enemy ships attacking first, not expecting a surprise and brave attack from the Ottoman fleet which had such small numbers. Doria suffered heavy losses in the first attack. Two hours later, they got themselves together with the help of the south winds. Andrea Doria started advancing towards the Ottoman fleet. The tide had suddenly turned against Barbarossa and he was worried. And he did something that wouldn't come to anyone's mind. He had won many battles by resigning himself to the will of God. And he knew that that was what he must do now. He opened up his hands and prayed. Then he ordered his men to bring him some paper. He told them to write down the 33rd verse from Surah Ashura and the 9th verse from Surah Al-Ahzab and tossed the papers into the water from both sides of the ship. The verses read, If he willed, he could still the wind and they would remain motionless on its surface. Indeed, that are signs for everyone patient and grateful. Ashura. O you who have believed, remember the favor of Allah upon you when armies came to attack you. And we sent upon them a wind and armies of angels you did not see. Al-Ahzab. God answered Barbarossa's prayers. The south wind stopped blowing. The enemy's 140 sailing galleys that could only move when there was a wind were immobilized. Not able to understand what had happened, Andrea Doria ordered his ships to start shooting cannonballs, but the Ottoman fleet was out of range. The Ottomans had less cannonballs, but a longer range. They stayed out of range of the enemy ships and bombarded the Crusaders. With Allah's will, the expected victory was finally theirs. They had destroyed the enemy battleships and Andrea Doria had fled. It was the 27th of September, 1538, a Friday, with the Battle of Prevetsa, the Christians had lost their dominance over the Mediterranean. The Battle of Prevetsa was a turning point for Ottoman seafaring. As much as it was for the Christian nations, the Ottoman Empire had entered fully into maritime politics. The era of Suleiman the Magnificent was a milestone for Ottoman presence in the Mediterranean. After the battle, the Mediterranean started being called the Turkish Lake. And after many victories, Barbarossa died on the 4th of July, 1546, in Istanbul. He was interned in his shrine in Besiktas. Even in present day, the Turkish ships that pass by his shrine honor him with a special salute or a cannon blast. May Allah bless him. After his many victories, Suleiman the Magnificent praised him by saying, Slow down, Hayreddin. It is not for one man to have so many conquests in a lifetime and commissioned for a book about his life. When we look at his life spent at sea, we see having many great victories and praises to God, but we always find him showing praise and gratitude to Allah without being proud or full of himself. Barbarossa is another name forgotten on dusty shelves that we should remember. While facing his struggles, he never gave up and resigned himself to the will of God because he knew exactly what his mission on earth was.